gamers, Tony here from the Smartphone Nation. I'm doing a little bit something different tonight. As Rich and I have talked about, even though the name of our channel is Smartphone Nation, we're not just talking about smartphones and smartphone games. We're doing anything that encompasses mobile. And as you saw, Rich did a 3DS XL unboxing. And we're going to talk about anything that has to do with mobile gaming and technology on this channel. So, I had a cool opportunity this week. My wife was getting really frustrated with her laptop. It was big and bulky and it the battery life really sucked on it and so she said I need something that's more feasible for me to sit down, browse the web on and type. And so I sold her laptop online and Google Google's IO was last week and I decided to go ahead and check out uh Chromebooks. And so I did some research on them and took a look and um found out, you know, my wife was looking for a long battery life. She was looking for a great browsing experience on the web and also um, some just great word processing and so I decided to go with a Chromebook and I decided to pick me one up as well because I like to do a lot of blogging and I like to write reviews uh, on on laptops and things like that and Chromebooks, uh, Chromebooks just seemed feasible and so I was pretty stoked after watching Google's I.O. and just decided to go ahead and take the plunge and pick us both up a Chromebook which means today I get to compare the two main Chromebook models out there. Now HP has also made a Chromebook, but it didn't get great reviews. And really, Acer and Samsung have been the mainstays in the Chromebook field so far, with a lot more coming on board later this year. So I'll be comparing the two main models today. The uh, Samsung Chromebook, which is a $250 entry model. They do have these in different configurations, but this is the main configuration. It's $250. And then the Acer C7 Chromebook, which is touted at $199. So these are the two Chromebooks we'll be looking at, comparing, and seeing what the differences are. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay here, so taking a look at the laptops, I'm going to explain the tech specs. Um, on the right here, we have the Samsung Chromebook, and it obviously runs Google OS. It has a Xenos 5250 CPU in it. It has an 11.6 LED HD cam monitor in it. I'm sorry, not a camera, a monitor. It has a memory of 2 gigabytes a DDR3, and then it has a 16 gigabyte solid state drive. And it also does wireless A, B, G, and N. So that's it for the Samsung Chromebook. On the left hand side, we have obviously the Acer Chromebook, and its tech specs are a little bit different. It has the Intel 847 uh, processor. Both these processors are dual core processors. It's got an 11.6 HD uh, Cine Crystal display. It also has 2 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. And instead of a solid state drive, Acer chose to put in a 320 gigabyte um, standard hard drive. And it also has wireless A, B, G, and N. Now, the Acer comes with a removable 4 cell battery. And the Samsung comes with a little bit larger battery, but it's built in and not user replaceable. So that's the main difference in the tech specs between these two laptops. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the angles. They both are very thin. As you can see, looking at the front of them here, both are a little, are a little thin. Uh, the Samsung one definitely wins out aesthetically. On the left-hand side of the Samsung, we have a SD card slot and a wireless, uh, or not wireless, but a headphone jack and also a microphone jack. On the back we have a USB 3.0 port, a USB 2.0 port, and an HDMI port, as well as the power cable jack, and then a card for, uh, you can do 3G. Now not this model, this is the Wi-Fi only model, but on the 3G model you can put a 3G SIM card in there. Nothing on the right hand side, and nothing on the front. So pretty standard there with the Samsung model. Now on the Acer model, looking at the front, we also have, you can barely see it here, an SD card slot. On the left hand side, this one actually has an Ethernet port and a VGA port. So a lot of people that still like hardwired connections are going to like the Acer because it has a hardwired connection, Ethernet port, and VGA out port in case you have to hook up to an old projector, which is nice. You have a fan slot, which you do not have on the Samsung, HDMI out, USB 2.0, the back you can see the removable battery. On the other side, you have a headphone and microphone jack, 
two more USB 2.0 ports, the power port, and then also a Kingston lock port. Now, on the bottom of these devices, you'll see the Samsung, you cannot get in there. Now, obviously, there is some screws, so I'm sure that people have figured out how to take it apart, but it's not built to be user upgraded or user replaceable. The Acer, on the other hand, has a removable battery, which you can buy a bigger battery for this model. It also has a panel that can be taken off to upgrade the RAM and the hard drive. So if you want to put a solid state drive in this one, you are able to do that in the Acer. As far as ports and hardware go, I'm going to have to say that I like the Acer a little bit better. And that's because even though it doesn't have a USB 3.0 port, even though the battery doesn't last as long, it does have an extra USB 2.0 port. It also has a hardwire port for Ethernet connection and VGA out port. So I definitely like the Acer a little bit more uh, for connectability, although the Samsung has a lot better looking case. Let's go ahead and crack these open and take a look inside. All right, well, now that I have both uh, Chromebooks open, on the right-hand side, you see the Samsung. On the left-hand side, you see the Acer C7. It's really hard to compare these two aesthetically on the inside because they look very similar, but there are some big differences. Um, the Acer trackpad is really nice. I've used both of these for several days now. And the keyboard is really nice. But the Samsung keyboard and trackpad, the trackpad's just a little bit more responsive, and the keyboard is a lot more comfortable. I don't know how else to say that. It sounds weird. I can type fine on both of them. This one just feels more aesthetically comfortable. Like I said, Samsung put a lot into the design of this to make it for people who want to plug it in, have it last six hours a day, aren't worried about any upgrades, and want to just run with it. The Acer, on the other hand, it's a little bit more rough around the edges coming in at $199 and doesn't look as nice aesthetically. It's also a little bit heavier but the Samsung definitely wins out on the inside. Also to the displays, the Samsung has a matte display so you're not going to get a lot of the glare. The Acer has a, uh, I forget what it's called, more of a glossy display I guess and so any lights in any rooms, the sunlight's going to shine bright off of it although that doesn't bother me as much. I, I chose the Acer for myself, the Samsung for my wife. Now both of these computers boot up really fast and if you don't understand anything about Chromebooks I'll try to put a link in the description below because you have to understand that everything is web based that's why this one can function just fine on a 16 gigabyte solid state drive because even though you can save things locally you're not really saving anything locally it's all meant to be on the cloud and you get a hundred gigabytes of free storage on Google Drive in addition to the free five gigabytes you get anyways you get it all year round or you get it for two years when you buy one of these new so you get a hundred gigabytes of storage on Google Drive for two years for absolutely free plus you have access to the Google App Store on these which means the Chrome App Store which means you can get Dropbox or any other tool that you really want to use but these computers boot up extremely fast this one with the current hard drive is about 25 seconds this one is about 10 and I mean boom they're ready to go so it's really, really fast. They both work really well. The battery on the Samsung will last about six to seven hours fully charged with a medium screen brightness. A medium screen brightness on the Acer, it's gonna last about three to three and a half hours. I personally don't like, I personally don't mind plugging in um, laptops. I'm kind of used to that after using Windows-based laptops for the past several years. So once again, my choice was the Acer. Now I'm not doing this video to show you uh, which one wins out or to only give you my opinion. I'm kind of glad that we have both of them so we can give, uh, give some different uh, looks at them. The other thing is that you do notice a little bit of choppiness um, when doing some streaming video with the Samsung or also you notice a little bit of uh, not every app works, especially games for example like Bastion because they don't have the correct applet. The Samsung will run all those games and streaming video seems to run a little bit better on, or I'm sorry, the Acer has streaming video that runs a little bit better on it and then also uh, will run games like Bastion as well. Now that being said, Samsung will run about 90% of the apps or more in the Google Chrome App Store and uh, 
same with Acer, probably a little bit more than that because it does have that one compatibility issue worked out. They both run Netflix very well, and I've been very impressed with that um, in my testing. So basically, once again, as the consumer, we're left with kind of a conundrum because on this one we have a great screen, great aesthetics, very comfortable typing, really long battery life. On this one we have upgradability, um, better app compatibility, a little bit more horsepower even though everything's web based so it will rely on your internet connection. And I really wish that these two could just kind of sleep together and we would have their kid and it would be the perfect Chromebook. I feel the same way about the Nexus 7 and um, the Amazon Kindle Fire HD. I like features of both of them neither of them nailed it and I wish that they would just combine and produce an amazing $199 tablet. So I kinda feel the same way about these two things. I love some things about the Samsung. I love some things about the Acer and I wish they would just work you know I wish in situations like this companies would work together to perform the perfect thing instead of some hits and some misses and vice versa. So that's it for my comparison between these two. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry I was kind of all over the place kind of talking as I record here. But uh, the Samsung, once again, is $250. You can click on the link below to buy it. The Acer comes in $199. You can click on the link below to buy it. I hope you enjoyed the comparison. I definitely like both Chromebooks. And whatever one you decide to go with, I definitely support your decision because they both have strengths and weaknesses. I'm actually going to be doing a video next. Make sure you check it out. I'm actually going to be upgrading my Acer. I'm going to be putting 8 gigs of RAM in it as well as a uh, over 200 plus gig solid state drive. And I'm going to be showing you how to upgrade it and do that. So this has been Tony from Smartphone Nation, also from Classic Lead. Also support my partner Rich um, from Review Tech USA on my partner in this channel. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, favorite, and subscribe.